the Jug Glendaceae or walnut family. These are found in uh, North America and Asia. They are generally trees. Uh, they have large uh, aromatic leaves, uh, generally um, pinnate uh, uh, growth form and alternate. The flowers <coughs> are unisexual in catkins. The fruits are pseudodrupes, as in walnuts, or called a trima in the hickory and pecan, uh, trima being um, uh, a nut-like fruit that uh, the shell splits open when it's mature. There are many economically important um, um, plants in this genus, uh, black walnut, uh, English or Persian walnut, pecans, and hickories. Here you can see uh, upper on the left a photograph of a trima, a hickory that um, uh, has uh, ripened and the, um, the leaves are, or the outer husks are opening up to release the mature nut. On the right is walnut characteristics. Uh, you can see the, the large pinnate leaves, the uh, nut inside a husk that isn't uh, opening at maturity, the male flowers and catkins and the little reduced female flowers, and uh, in particular the twigs are quite stout, uh, large leaf traces left, and um, uh, glandular um, uh, markings on the uh, stems and leaves uh, make it uh, quite aromatic. We're in the Phagales again, the same uh, plant order as we did with the Phagaceae. We have 8 to 12 genera. There's several genera, only have one uh, species in them. There's some sort of strange outliers in this family. About 90 species in total. Uh, again, we're in the Phagales in the rosid section of the true dicots. Notable species, the shagbark hickory, Cary ovata, is um, uh, common uh, in Iowa. Uh, there's also uh, pecan and macronut hickory are two um, very popular other uh, species of uh, caria. Uh, Persian or English walnuts, Juglans regia, is in the same genus as black walnut, and which uh, does grow in Iowa. And uh, there's a few other interesting ones like the wingnut, uh, Terrell caria. Interesting to, uh, if you for some reason uh, don't have uh, nuts or flowers to uh, try and distinguish between a walnut and a hickory. Um, you can cut a slice through a twig, and if you see chambers, uh, you probably have a walnut, and if you don't see chambers, you probably have a hickory. Here is black walnut, as you can see, native to Iowa and much of uh, the east, turn US, United States. Um, classic uh, look of a walnut, um, big green uh, fruits growing all summer, or very large pinnate leaves. Um, classic look underneath the walnut in the fall, uh, when the fruits fall off and turn brown, um, they will stain anything uh, seemingly permanently, and indeed they have been used uh, as a source of dye. Uh, that uh, substance is called juglone. It uh, is allelopathic um, to nearby plants, which means it inhibits their growth, uh, but it also is this uh, irky dark black color that's been used in hair dyes and uh, textile dyes and even some uh, food colorings. Um, this fruit is very popular in, uh, in uh, nuts, and uh, in this nut is very popular in ice creams and cakes. Uh, it's got a stronger flavor than um, uh, what you think of as English walnut or Persian walnut, but uh, it's still uh, very delicious. This uh, tree is used for um, economically for, uh, or industrially for veneers and furniture. In addition, uh, before we had um, high-strength metals, it was used to make propellers in the early, uh, early airplanes and in gun stocks. And um, the, that uh, popularity has uh, led it to be somewhat over-harvested. Shagbark hickory, um, very classic, uh, uh, specific uh, bark look to it. If you see a big tree with shaggy uh, looks, uh, uh, leaves of bark hanging off like this, um, uh, just about nothing else it can be except shagbark hickory. Younger trees don't uh, have that aspect. Uh, here you can see the nuts, and, uh, and indeed they do split open when maturity, so that's a trima. Native to much of the eastern United States and much of Iowa. Uh, these are wind-pollinated. The uh, flowers are um, catkins, and they're on separate locations in the tree, and um, uh, do not uh, have anything very showy on them that's going to try and attract insects. They just rely on the wind and gravity. Uh, these nuts of this tree were very valued, uh, highly valued by our Native uh, Americans. They even had uh, some primitive um, plantations that they had established, and additionally they're very popular with bears, foxes, rabbits, birds, um, about anything. The wood is hard enough that it's actually been used in um, high use, uh, high traffic areas like gym floors and roller rinks, so um, some pretty tough stuff. 
Uh, hickories are known for a very deep, deep, deep taproot. All the caria are known for that, and that makes them extremely difficult to transplant. So that's sort of unfortunate. If you want one in your landscaping, um, you pretty much got to grow it from a seed. Uh, getting that taproot to uh, transplant is basically unsuccessful. You get a, a tree grows for a while, and then you get a high wind, and uh, over it goes. An interesting um, uh, tree we don't see much in the United States is uh, Terocaria fraxinifolia, or called wingnut. And that name comes from these funny little uh, uh, wings on the uh, fruits as they develop. It has a uh, long, long, long um, uh, catkin, up to 20 inches. And uh, there are several different genera, all of which have sort of different types of little wings that uh, make them interesting for landscaping. Uh, the English or Persian walnut, uh, pretty much everybody calls it the Persian walnut in the United States and a few other places. Uh, the name English walnut came up apparently to distinguish it from uh, our black walnut. It um, has a characteristic large, large leaves with uh, pinnate um, uh, formation on them. Uh, here you can see uh, uh, the walnut uh, you know, in the husk. That um, The husk is just about uh, to uh, release it. It has popped open. These are very popular for nut meats, um, oil, uh, and also wood. Uh, walnut is a very attractive uh, furniture wood. It's been in cultivation for thousands of years for all of those reasons. Um, it does also produce uh, juglone in the roots um, and in the fallen leaves and nuts, which um, can uh, be quite problematic to other plants that are growing nearby. However, some maples, uh, birches, other trees are resistant to juglone. Iowa natives, uh, well, I've already mentioned uh, uh, shagbark hickory and um, uh, black walnut, but additionally uh, butternut, juglans cinerea, so uh, in the same uh, genus as uh, black walnut. And a couple other hickories, uh, Caria tomentosa, Caria illinoensis is a pecan, it's native to eastern Iowa, and uh, bitternut hickory, Caria cordiformis. Um, picture you can see here is butternut, which has um, become fairly rare across its original distribution partly because of harvesting, partly because of some pathogens. There's the fungus and a couple other things that uh, pick on it pretty good. And um, partly because it doesn't tolerate shade. And so if it's in a woodland setting that um, is not being managed and it gets uh, overtopped by other trees, uh, they die. Juglone is uh, the main source of any toxicity in this family. Um, it's an interesting uh, hydroquinone, and uh, horses are sensitive to it if they eat it or are bedded in it. Um, they can founder and get colic. Um, and additionally, as I mentioned already, it's a little apathic to many other species of plants that might be trying to grow nearby. Tomatoes in particular are very sensitive to juglone. Further uh, information on hickories, uh, the aggies have a a uh, pretty extensive uh, uh, listing, walnuts in Wikipedia separately from Juglandaceae. And if you want to go to the West Virginia Black Walnut Festival, there's your link. That concludes the Juglandaceae.